Okay, all right, they've given me the go-ahead to start. So, all right, glad to see all of you guys here. Um, if you don't have a copy of my book, Ditch That Textbook Yet, we do have free copies for anybody that comes into the presentation, so feel free. It'll be real short. I bet we'll probably be 15 minutes and then we'll be done. So, um, I'm Matt Miller. I am the author of this book, a teacher for 11 years, high school Spanish, and I also write at the Ditch That Textbook blog. Um, write about technology and creative teaching and innovation and stuff like that. So, um, and so we're going to talk about Google Drawings. And in the whole Google app suite, Google Drawings is one of my absolute favorites. I love it. Um, I'm kind of shocked at how many people don't know that it exists, though. So, um, and one of the things that I really like about it is that it's almost like, let's switch over here real quick. It's almost like a, um, a digital poster board or a digital piece of paper. Oh, if you're just getting here, um, if you want to hang out for the presentation, it'll be maybe 15 minutes, you get a free copy of my book. And if you haven't gotten one, um, Ramon will probably go grab some here in a minute. If I get done and you don't have a copy, then just come see me. And there's some seats up here if you want to grab one. There he is, right back there. All right. Anyway, um, so it's kind of like a digital piece of paper or a digital poster board or something. And what's cool about it is, this is actually a little drawing here. It's real basic. And so you've got lines that you can add. You've got shapes, all these different shapes that you can add. You can add text boxes, and you can add pictures. And that's about it. And just those basics, with just those basics, there's so much that you can do with it. And so, yeah. So I'm going to show you one of those things. Now, the step-by-step -step of how to do this is available right here on this site. So what I've been suggesting is if you have a copy of the book, you might want to write this down, like in the cover of it or the front flap or maybe on a piece of paper, because this shows you the how-tos of how to do this whole interactive um, digital posters. And what's nice is on this same page, I have all these other sessions that I've done today. It's got all the how-tos on how to do all of that, too. So you basically are getting five sessions worth of how-tos all in one. Move it back up so you can read. OK. There we go. Yep, no problem. And so that's the site. It's ditchthattextbook.com slash ViewSonic. That site's not going anywhere. I'm not going to remove it. It'll just stay up there for as long as my website exists, <laughs> which hopefully is a long time, I hope. so. Um, so anyway, that's, that's where you can get the step-by-steps on how to do this. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go ahead. Are we all ready to scroll down? OK. So I'm going to scroll down to that part, and you can see what those resources look like. I just did a session on Google Classroom. If you're interested in some Google Classroom stuff, right after we're done here, I'm going to do a repeat of that. So if you wanted to hang out, the session's called Five Google Classroom Tricks You'll Want to Know. So if you want to hang out for that, too, then I'm going to do that right after this. And so digital interactive posters. I'm going to try really hard not to feedback again. So <laughs> this is an example of a digital interactive poster. And so if you've done posters in the classroom before, which so many of us have, they're kind of a hassle. You know, I mean, if you get a real honest to goodness poster board, you have to figure out how to buy them or if kids are going to bring them in. I mean, there's that whole issue of did they remember to bring them in? Did they actually bring them in? And then you got to have you know, your markers, your glue sticks, your magazines to cut things out, your construction paper. It's a big hassle. You've got little pieces of paper all over the floor. And so um, I really like using these instead because you have, you have the ability to create an even nicer product, but you don't have the mess. And you don't have to have all the materials. And so. As far as this goes, you just create a new Google Drawing. Let me show you where to find Google Drawings if you're not familiar with it. This is just my basic Google Drive. So you click on New, and you've got Docs and Sheets and Slides. If you go to More, that's where you find Google Drawings. And so I just click on it there, and it opens up a brand new Google Drawing. It's almost kind of like a single page slide. So kind of like a PowerPoint slide or a Google slide presentation. It's like just one page. That's kind of what it acts like. And so let's see. Here it is. OK, so here's kind of a, a ready-made one. And let me show you some of the elements of this that you can make really easily. 
And so with this one, it's got a kind of a big catchy title, right? If you want to do that, obviously all that takes is just a text box. And so if we were doing it about my book or blog, obviously I change this to be much bigger. And then the fonts, I'm sure you probably already know this, but sometimes people don't know this, is that with the fonts in slides and docs and drawings, if you don't like the fonts that they've got, if you click that more fonts button down at the bottom of the fonts list, there's all of these fonts that you can search through and add. And there's like hundreds of them. And so one of my favorite ones is the luckiest guy font. I just like that one. So, um, so I can use that and then there's another really neat trick that sometimes people don't know as far as making titles. And that is to add word art instead. Remember word art from way back in you know the old Microsoft Word, and that was like the cool thing to do with when when I was a kid anyway. All right, so there that is, and now I can resize it, and so that makes it kind of narrow. That keeps you from having to change the size of the font and everything. But then what's cool is that you can use all of these right here to change the, you know, like the fill color of it. I can make the line around the outside thicker. See how that became thicker? And then I can even change the color of the line, make it like a gray color instead. And then I can change it to that luckiest guy font because I just love it. So see, that kind of looks neat. That, that looks a little bit better than what we had before. And so you got that. So we'll stick that up here at the top. Now if we switch back over here, we see that we've got pictures. And with our regular old posters, if you wanted pictures, I mean, you could print them off of the internet and like glue them onto your poster, that amount of magazines, that kind of thing. What's nice is that all of these Google apps, slides and drawings and docs and all of that, you have all of these options for putting in pictures. Here's one that sometimes people don't realize. First, let me ask you a question. Whenever kids need to find a picture, where do they always seem to go? If they need to find a picture online, Google, exactly. Specifically, what part of Google? Images, images right? And what's the problem with images is that if you find a picture on Google Images that you want to use, sometimes copyright, exactly. You don't have the rights to use it, right? OK, check this out. Using search, I saw that at first and I thought, oh, that's just another Google image search. You know, why would I, why would I want to use that? But if you read the fine print, it says results shown are labeled for commercial reuse with modification. You have copyright that says all rights reserved. I'm the one who took this picture. You can ask me for permission. This is Creative Commons. It's a whole different license that basically says I'm the author of this, but I'll let you use it under these conditions. And this is the most permissive com Creative Commons license. It basically says you can use it for commercial gain and you can modify it and do whatever you want to it. So kids can definitely use this in their, in their posters. So there's a picture of a textbook. If we're going to ditch that textbook, I don't know if I want to put a picture of a textbook in there, but I've got to have something, right? So this is actually a picture that the long and the short of it is that we can use this in our poster. We can even publish it to the web if we want, and we have the rights to, to do that. So. So that's another nice part about it is that we've got those uh, abilities to, to use those pictures. The other thing you can do with a picture that sometimes people don't realize is you can take a snapshot. That you use the, I mean you can see it right there. You can use the camera on your device and take a picture of it. Now what's fun with that sometimes is to use that picture but then add a speech bubble to it or add something over the top of it. So it's going to put my picture in in just a second. I'm going to show you the shapes, and then that's where you can do that, if it ever does. Because the Wi-Fi here is like flawless, right? Not so much. <laughs> Anybody else have trouble with the Wi-Fi during the keynote like I did? Yeah, I know. It was pretty spotty, wasn't it? OK, so there's my picture. And I can use the shapes right here. This, by the way, opens up a whole new level of activities that you can do with Google Apps. Check this out. Call outs, look at those. You can add a speech bubble or a thought bubble over the top of it. Let's make it a thought bubble. I'm just going to draw it right on top of this picture. You can even grab this little yellow dot right here. I'm going to see if it's going to let me do that here. No, I'm going to do it over here. 
and I can move that over here so it's actually me thinking about it. And then I double click on it and I've got a text box inside. So that's another neat thing too, is to show what they would say, what they would think. You just add those extra layers on top of them. Now when it comes to text, that's where the shapes come in handy. So you've got all of these shapes that you can use. Think of this as your construction paper to lay behind the text. Because sometimes we do that, right? I'm kind of a fan of the rounded rectangle. You know, the one with the little rounded edges. So I could put that in there. See, it's got the nice blue background. I can click on this and change the background to a different color if I want to. And then you can either double click inside of it and there's already a text box in there or you can stick your own text box right on top of it either way. Okay, so I've got some text there. Now, when you first got here, you saw that I was saying that these are digital interactive posters, right? And so right now it's not really interactive, it's just kind of like a regular old poster. Here's what's make it, what makes it interactive. Because with a regular poster, it's whatever you can fit on the poster board is all you've got, right? Whatever information, whatever pictures, whatever text you can get on the poster board, that's it. These posters can be jumping off points to more information by using links. This is what sets these posters apart from regular ones. So I can highlight this and I can click on the link right here. This is something I love about the, the links here is I highlighted the words ditch that textbook. It automatically does a Google search for me. So I don't even have to type it in. I can just use that right there and hit apply. And so now anybody who jumps onto this file and they click on that link, they can go off for more information. So instead of saying, here's my poster about whales, here's all the information I can fit on my poster about whales. Now what you can say is, here's my poster about whales, click here to go to the Wikipedia article. Click here to go to a YouTube video to actually see a whale in motion. Click here to go see a picture. And so you can actually jump off and go do more things this way. Now to be able to make these links, links clickable, they have to be in the Google Drawing itself. See, another neat thing about Google Drawings is you can go to File, Download As, and you can download it as a picture, right? So if I click on that, it's going to save this as a picture file. I could stick it on my class website, I could put it in a Google document or whatever. The only problem with that is that the links aren't clickable that way. So if you provide somebody a link, a way to get into this file, then it's truly interactive and you can click on it. So. So anyway, the uses of this, I mean, it can just kind of branch out on and on and on beyond that. Let me pull up my, my um, web page real quick and see if there's anything else I wanted to show you about that. Are there any questions about what we've done so far? Because that'll look pretty doable, pretty basic, yeah. And there's so much that you can do with it is, is really neat. So here, let's um, scroll down real quick. I just want to make sure I don't let you go without telling, let's see, we talked about titles, images, shapes, links, yep. And then I've got a couple of um, links down at the bottom of this. This is that website that I gave you earlier, ditchthattextbook.com slash ViewSonic. These are a couple of blog posts that I did about Google Drawings. So if you're interested in more ways that you can use Google Drawings than a class, I mean this one is 10 activities for classes that you can use in your own class if you want to. So. All right, that pretty much covers it. Any questions? Okay, if you didn't get a copy of the book, come see me and thank you very much for coming. And if you want me to sign your book, just come on up here and I'm happy to do that too, so.